Hi, my name is Alex with Ape Tech Tutorials, and today I'm going to be showing you two different ways of making a field required. One of them is going to be a very correct way of doing it, but could be kind of damaging. And the second way is easy to do, but it's very lazy, and it doesn't always serve the same effect or have the same impact, but I've used both ways in the past, and I'm going to show them both to you. <laughs> If you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing, drop a like if you get value out of this video, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. Let's jump into Jura. All right, so in Jura, we're gonna come down to our field configurations. This is how we're gonna configure the, using the first method. So you're so gonna click on the gear on the right-hand side. We're gonna go down to issues. Once you're in issues, you're gonna scroll all the way down to field configurations. Now you are going to have to create a field configuration scheme and a field configuration if you want to do this correctly. Now, if you want to do this correctly, I do have all the steps required to basically do this the appropriate way. Go watch that video. In this video, I'm just going to basically just do a reminder, a refresher, if you will. And the caveat here is do not make a field required if you only have one field configuration scheme and one field configuration. Because if you have only one, which is the default, the moment you make a field required in that field configuration, you just made it required for every single project that has that field configuration. By default, every project that you create in your Jira instance will have that field configuration. So make sure you make a copy and then make your field required there and then apply that new field configuration scheme over to the project that you want that field required. Otherwise, you're asking for a whole lot of trouble. Anyways, let me kind of describe what I just said. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna come down to the field configuration. As you can see, I have two field configurations. This default one is the one that is applied to every single project. I'm not gonna touch that one. Instead, I have a different one. I have one called Team A Story Default Field Configuration. This can be called whatever you want. And you'll notice that it applies to this JSD field configuration scheme. If I click on that field configuration scheme over here, you'll notice that I have um, the default configuration for all the other issue types and just for the story. Now, if you're confused as to what you're seeing, again, go make sure you watch that other video where I basically described all this in detail. All you need to know is that this particular configuration scheme is only applying to just this one project. So that means that whenever I make, and specifically whenever I make an, a field in the story required, which is what we're gonna do right now, it's only gonna to apply to stories and it's only gonna to apply to this JSD. And so I'll show you proof of that in a moment. So anyways, I'm gonna go back into the field configuration for the team A story and I'm gonna find due date cause I like the due date. And I'm gonna make this one, right now it's optional. I'm gonna make it required. And all you gotta do is literally just click on this required button and you'll see that it, it adds a little required label here and this becomes optional, okay? And now to test it, to basically see it in action, we're gonna go and hit create and we're gonna pick the project that is JSD, which has this rule applied or this field configuration applied to. And you'll notice when we scroll down to due date that it now has an asterisk. That means that the field is now mandatory. You will not be able to hit the create button unless you fill out a due date. Now this could be really important, right? It's something you wanna do, but there's some caveats, right? If, if you mess up, if you mess up the whole, you didn't separate and manage your field configurations appropriately, now, if another project goes to hit create and they are impacted because you made that field mandatory and it's not in the screen, which basically means they can't even, they don't even have the option to add the due date. You just completely broke their Jira. So you do not want to do that. You want to basically follow these steps and make a copy, make your fields required on that copy, and then apply that copy to only the project and preferably only the issue type that you need that field mandatory or required in. Okay, so make sure you do that. Now, way number two, method number two, I should say, is using the workflow. So this way or this method is, I, I call it the lazy way of doing it. It's still effective, but it's not as user friendly. And so let me show you what that looks like. So we're going to go back into this JSD project. And what essentially what I'm going to do is upon creation, upon the creation of an issue, so essentially when I hit the create button, 
And I'm going to do it for like a task just to kind of make things easier. And so actually, I don't even think, yeah, you can't even, well, you, I'll show you in a second what, I, what I'm talking about. So we're going to make it so that when an issue is created, we're going to make a field required. Okay. But we're going to use the, the workflow method. Now, the workflow method is interesting. And the reason I hesitated there for a second is because technically, the way I've set up my workflow, I cannot make just a field required for like a task. Because I'm using the workflow method and this specific method, this specific workflow applies to all of the issue types, as you can see here, because of this, when I make a change to my workflow to describe basically making the field required, I'm making it required on all the issue types. Okay. And so upon creation of every single issue type, we're going to have the same problem. So if you basically don't change this and you have this set up where you have all the issue types all bundled on the one workflow and you do what I'm about to show you, you're going to probably break something too. So making field required in Jira is not the most straightforward thing in the world, which is why I typically, I always tell teams that if, if they feel like they have to make fields required, they have a people problem, not a tool problem, because while Jira does allow you to kind of maneuver your way through making fields required, you got to have a very strong admin doing this, right? You got to have a seasoned professional doing it. Otherwise you're going to break stuff. But let me just show you the quick and easy way of doing it and, and basically assuming the risk and, and being okay with the fact that we're going to break things. But I just want to show you the steps because there are some intricate steps to basically make sure you don't break things, but as a, such as making more workflows, assigning those issue types to those other workflows and only leaving the one workflow that you do want to be required, uh, basically not touched. So anyways, we're going to go into the actions. We're going to click on this little pencil. We're going to now be in our workflow here and we're going to click on this create line, not on the status of to do, but on the line for create. So every single one of you, regardless of what your workflows look like, you should must have need to have is required to have this create line. So we're going to click on that line. We're going to come over here to validators. And so under validators, we're going to add a validator and we're going to make field required validator. And so when we select that option, we're going to click on add. And then once we click on that, we have to pick the field that we want. So I'm just going to make uh, components required and you can put a message. This is optional, but you can put a message. This will basically help a little bit with the user friendliness that I was talking about a few minutes ago where it's not the, the most friendliest. So add an optional message and then click add. Once you do that, all you got to do is publish your draft. Okay. So once you publish it, now you are ready to test it out. So we're going to be going to create, we're going to go to that JSD and components is already a required field. So I probably didn't pick a good one, but let me go to the task because in the task, it's not a required field, right? So remember, I, in my field configuration, I have a field configuration that applies only to the stories. So now that I'm in the task, the component is not a mandatory field at the task level. But now at the workflow level, I've made it a required field. So check this out. Look at how this one works. So you'll notice that there's no red asterisk on it. So some task. And so when I go to hit create, you'll notice that now the UI will show me that field components is required. Even though there's no red asterisk guiding me or telling me, alerting me that I need to fill it out, I have to wait until after I click the create button for Jira to tell me, hey, you need to fill this one out. And so you can see that's why it's like, I call it the lazy person's way of doing it because it's not very user friendly until after the fact, right? So after you try to hit create, so it gets really annoying. So this way is just a little bit easier, right? Because you're just at the workflow level and you can add as many as you want and you're not impacting everybody. You're just impacting the folks that are using that workflow. So it's a little bit lower risk, but you do lose a red asterisk. So depending on your team and what you're looking for or don't want, you could get away with this, or sometimes you might have to require the red asterisk. If I had to pick, I always go with method number one because that is the correct and proper way of doing it. It just has the most, the most amount of hoops you gotta jump through to make sure you set it up just right. So anyways, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you got any value out of this video, drop a like. If you have any questions, which I'm sure you're going to have questions, let me know in the comment section below. And if you haven't subscribed, I recommend you subscribe because we are almost at a thousand subscribers. And so uh, your subscription at this point would be very, very much appreciated. So anyways, thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next one.